Well, I'm out here on this cold, frosty morning up in Canada with my Linhoff Super Technica 5 camera. Today, I'm going to take you guys through this camera. I've had a lot of questions about the Linhoff, and a lot of people have emailed me wondering what the Linhoff is like and how I like using it. So I decided to take you through this camera, how it works, the things I like about it, the things that I find a little quirky about it, but I find these are great precision cameras. In the late 1800s, Valentin Linhoff created Linhoff cameras. He was a master mechanic who wanted precision cameras. He kind of had the philosophy of quality over mass production. In the late 40s, they kind of created the Linhoff Master Technica 3, which was the kind of the first modern version of this camera and a first modern version that you could use well. About 10 years later, they created a camera with a rangefinder system, a rangefinder coupling system. So then you had this metal box that had a drop bed, had triple bed extension, a rangefinder, and this was really miles ahead of its time. After that was the Linhoff 4, Linhoff 5. This is the Linhoff Super Technica, which was made right before the Master Technica, which is out now. Then there's a few other iterations, a Linhoff 2000, Linhoff 3000. But this camera here is from 1970. It's 50 years old. I got it completely restored, completely rebuilt, and it works wonderfully right now. I'm gonna take you through this camera, how they work, uh, what I really like about these camera, uh, what are the little quirks of the camera, and if you're thinking about buying one, things to look for when you're gonna buy one of these cameras. I've taken a lot of great photographs with these cameras and I really like them a lot. We'll go somewhere warmer and I'll uh, take you through this whole system. Now, of course, one of the great things about these cameras is its build quality. These things are tanks, they're all metal. You can literally drop it. I think the only thing that would happen is you could break the ground glass, but they're very tough, they're very rugged, and they could travel really easily. You can just fold this up, and this is a metal box that you can take in your luggage. It really is uh, well made. I don't think there's a better camera made out there. These cameras are super precise. They are really well designed, well thought out. If you look around here, everything, the fit and finish is perfect on these things. These things really, really um, are a wonderful tool for image making. These cameras will last a lifetime, literally. If you look after it, it will really, really last a long time. One of the things that this camera has is you'll notice the rangefinder system. If you're familiar with Leica cameras, you know how a rangefinder works, but you can use this by looking through the rangefinder system and focusing using this camera handheld, which is a really interesting way of working. You have to still be very careful and then you have to watch your framing lines but it definitely can be done using this camera handheld. I've used it handheld many times and it works really well that way. I have a handle on it, I have a viewfinder on it, and so having a working rangefinder system is really a benefit to this camera. But you have to remember, if you are gonna try to use the rangefinder system, your lens has to be cammed. There's a cam right here, and your lens has to be cammed to match this camera. You can't just use any cam and any lens on it, or else the rangefinder system won't work. Your pictures will be out of focus. These cameras have a very specific way that you have to use them and operate them. To open it is very easy. You just click the little notch and then it comes down and the two latches hook on and then your bed is solid here. 
Now, to pull your front standard out to mount a lens to use it, the thing that you have to do that most people, or I shouldn't say most people, but a lot of people do wrong, is they just grab the front standard and pull it out and try to hit the rails. There's a big danger in that because you can break the guides underneath. This camera actually, when I got it, was in pretty rough shape. The guides were broken underneath. I had to replace them. But there is a specific way of pulling the front rail out onto the front rail bed here. You have to push these two buttons down. You have to slide this to the end and then you grab the front standard and then it pulls out just like that. You hold this down again and you slide it to the front and then now your camera is ready to use and it is set up at the proper direction. To mount a lens, mounting a lens is super simple on these. You have these two notches. They go down in the front uh, lens standard. This pops up, the lens goes in like that, and then you make sure that the lens is solid in there so it doesn't fall out. And that's as simple as it gets to mounting the lens. Once you do those things, the camera is ready to use. It has full movements. That is one of the beauties of this camera. You can get, if you look at the front rise here, it actually, there is two dots. There's a white dot here or a black dot. When you put it on the white dot, that is to raise the front standard. If you go like this, lever latches the front standard up. The front goes all the way up and you pull that out. To put the front standard down, you just pull that out. You put it on the black dot and then from there the front standard gets ratcheted down. You can see here there's arrows. If you loosen this arrow, you get side to side movements on the front standard. And if you loosen this arrow, and it's great because the arrows show you what the front standard will do. You loosen that, you get full swing movements. If you push these two knobs in, you get front tilt going backwards and front tilt going forwards. So these two buttons here are push it in. And then of course it has zero dents for when you go and it locks into place and then you're back at 90 degrees on using it. To focus the camera, it has a little latch back here. You pop up the ground glass. This is great if you don't have a dark cloth, want to try to use the camera out in the sunlight. This works really well. I still find it's a little easier to use a dark cloth on these cameras, but it also has this quick release and then you get a full view of the back of the camera here, of the ground glass that you can do. To rotate the back is quite easy. There's a little pin you push in, and when you push in, it rotates the back. Quite nice, and it'll rotate in any direction. The nice thing about that as well is you don't have to take the back off, which sometimes you can risk dropping the back, breaking the ground glass. It's always staying on the camera. This camera has full back movements as well. And to access the back, you have to loosen these knobs here. And there's two push knobs out here. And then the back comes out and you have full range of movements from back tilt to back swing. And it's really an ingenious system with these pegs here that go into the body and how it, you can move and manipulate the back. And once you have it in place, you can lock those and it gives you a bit more back extension as well. A nice little feature these cameras have is a cold shoot. You can put a viewfinder on top, you can put a pocket wizard if you're firing strobes. So it's always great to have that. And of course it has a bubble level finder here on the top. And the other nice feature is that these cameras have a drop bed. You can drop this down to get a little front tilt, or you can also rise this to even get more movements out of these cameras. And of course, like every other large format camera, there's no camera that's perfect. This camera has a few little quirks that uh, I am not big on. And one is the front rise and fall. 
the ratchet system, it just, uh, even on new cameras that I've tried, it hasn't worked perfect and you have to play with it. You have to be very careful how you rise and fall that. So that's one of the things that uh, I'm not big on. One of the things here in Canada is, of course, when I was out earlier, it's winter time. And these things are all metal and they can get extremely cold. And handling and using them with your hands, all of a sudden it just sucks all the heat out of your hands. So that can be a bit of a problem as well for me, especially up here, if you live in a warmer climate, it's not an issue at all. Like a BMW, this camera needs servicing. Uh, you have to look after this camera. This camera will need servicing probably every 10 or 15 years. And I know there's gonna be people that says, oh, I've had mine for 25 years or 30 years or haven't used it, but it really needs servicing because some things can happen things can get a little loose. There can be an oil buildup in the, in the bed here. Um, there can be a few things. So you really got to kind of probably every 10 or 15 years, it'll need a good service and a good tune up to get it running, but they are precision pieces of equipment. So you can expect that as well. Uh, basically nothing out there is going to last forever. And if you look after this thing, it's going to look after you. The other thing that I find about using these cameras is, and this is purely an aesthetic thing, when I'm taking uh, portraits of people, they don't respond super well to this camera. They go, oh, that's interesting, and they just kind of leave it. It's kind of metal, it's industrial. It's not a camera that is super attractive to people. And I know that sounds a little weird, but when I take a wood field camera out in the wood and the bellows, and especially if they're colored bellows, people really respond. They stop and they look, and they're really fascinated by this old thing. This looks like it can be modern, and it is modern. They're still made uh, in Germany, but people really respond better to a wood field camera, which is, which is kind of weird, but I get it for sure. And the one other thing that I really like on these cameras too, is they actually have strap lugs. So you can put a strap on them, you can shut it and you can carry it around on your strap. I was gonna tell you some of the things, if you are considering buying one of these cameras, some of the things to look out for. If it is an older Linhof camera and the ground glass has never been changed, you are probably going to need a new ground glass. Even if it's an old Linhof ground glass, they were not as bright as the new ones are. The new Linhof ground glass, they are probably up to two times brighter than the old Linhof ground glass were. You can count on that. And a ground glass is gonna run you about $200 American and you're gonna to have to get that in. I mean, if you wanna be able to see and use it well. And film is so expensive these days, and it's getting more expensive that you really wanna have a system that works well, that you're not gonna struggle with, that you're not gonna lose photographs with. If the bellows on the camera has never been replaced, or if there's pinholes, yes, you can patch them, but they're probably gonna need replacing as well. A new set of bellows will run you probably 250 to $300. And you really want to get Linhof bellows. You do not want the Chinese knockoff bellows. The Chinese bellows are thicker. So what happens is you compress the bellows and the front standard can't close properly. And when this comes up, you can't close the camera properly and you'll start to get scratches on things. You'll start to put stress on uh, the metal. So don't count on getting a cheap knockoff bellows they will not work as well as a proper Linhof bellows, which is what you really want. One of the things I mentioned before was that when people don't open and close these cameras properly, you can break the front uh, bed here, the steering guides that go into there. And if that's busted, that's gonna be a couple hundred dollar fix as well on. So that's one of the things you have to look for. If you can see the camera before you buy it, or if you're just buying it online, but if you can see the camera, you want to test out the uh, focus. You want a focus that is nice and smooth and not super tight. Even on the newer cameras, they used a different kind 
uh, lubricant on them and they can be very, very tight. So you might have to get that overhauled and get that fixed as well. I had the leathers taken off and replaced. This leather was fairly good, but even Linhoff back in the day used a uh, bad glue on here and the glue kind of ate away at the leather and made it shrink a little bit. And often what happens is you could see in between the leather and the metal where you could see a gap in there. You're gonna wanna fix the leather or else it's gonna just crack and peel off and be all metal and probably not great. There are a lot of things that can go wrong with this camera, but if you get one that is in good shape and you look after it, it will last you a long, long time. One of the things to check out are, are these uh, knobs that you push in so that you can uh, do uh, the front tilt or back tilt, and sometimes these knobs can break as well. So buying a used camera like this, especially if you can't see it, is can be a little tricky because you can get one and then all of a sudden it can cost you you know a couple hundred dollars or more uh you know all the way up to a thousand dollars to to fix and get running so you just need to be aware that that can happen i hope you enjoyed the tour of my lenhoff super technica 5 camera and any Lenhoff out there, they really are wonderful cameras. They're hard to beat, so precise. If you get one that's in good working order, it's gonna last you years and years and years out in the field working. And these are great working field cameras that I can't speak highly enough. Sure, it has a few uh, a little quirks and drawbacks, but really not much is gonna beat one of these cameras if it's up and running properly and in good shape. I hope you enjoyed this little mini review. It's not really a review, but just more of a tour of this camera. I plan on uh, doing more. Let me know if you liked this little tour or not. Don't forget to subscribe. Everybody stay safe. Hope to see you soon. Cheers.